Yeah. 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 Yeah.
People that are used to writing code in a specific way have a really hard time to convert the way they type code, they write code, and hence the time you lose in fixing those. So, what can we do about it? From PHP. It's uh, the thing that can help us solve this problem. If you look at the README, it states that if you're sick and tired of deflating code quality over and over again, Grunt Pitch will do it for you. But I much, like not much, but I prefer the initial pitch that they had, which is sick and tired of complaining about your coworkers' code. <laughs> Grunt Pitch will do it for you. So in short, it's a tool that checks your git commits and it compared, it uh, runs a list of tasks that you've defined and if all of them are okay, you get the green grumpy guy and if they're not okay, you get the red grumpy guy and your commit is rejected. So you don't have any commits that are not compliant to your standard. And if you're a little bit old fashioned like me, you can switch to the old <laughs> messages which are the classic Medusa and Grumpy Cat. I think this Grumpy Cat is the one that uh, got me excited about Grumpy issues. <laughs> Before we go any further, I'll, like, again, it's my first talk, so chances are something would go wrong, but uh, I'll try to do a little demo. Uh, 
So and I'm going to use the default configuration first. So right now, when I create a new file, and <coughs> yep, and I accidentally add two semicolons. Now, if I add this. and try to commit. We're getting an error, but it's not what you expect. It's that the, the PHP sys fixer is not found. This is because we also need the executable for this one. So we're going to do again a composer require. We're going to take the one from Fabian. Oops. Oops. Boom. So if we try to commit again, now we're getting an error. Duplicate semicolon, blank line is expected. So if we check. Our file again. We're going to add a new line here and delete this one. And bam. Ooh. Another quick demo. This time it's going to be a faster one because I've got everything prepared. Um, Over here, I've added the security checker. And this is something that's not really um, about standards. It's um, a tool that verifies that your composer packages, the composer packages that you're using are uh, <coughs> without any security vulnerabilities. And since I'm an AWS fanboy as well, I'm going to add the uh, Um, AWS SDK, and I'm going to select version 3 because this is the one that I'm familiar with. No, no. <laughs> and now if I add my compose Composer log file. Ah. Okay, that one didn't work. Um, see that it checks and it says that um, the, the version 3 of this package has vulnerabilities so Grunpage we can do this for you as well and I think that's enough. does all that. Um, basically, it's under the hood, it's using Symfony, the print components, Gitonomics, GitLab, and Composer. And with all of these combined, it manages to intercept your commits, uh, check the files that are in there, and run all the tasks that you have specified.
On the front lines, you've got stuff like code section, uh, PHP unit, uh, PHP code sniffer, VPAT, and many more. You can also add your favorite linkers so that your JSON XML and YAML files are according to standards as well. Um, and this is the full list of all the tasks that you can specify. And for me, the beauty of Room PHP is that it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's not trying to do everything that those cool <coughs> tools that you already have do. It's it's basically integrating those into your project, into your workflow, um, and it does, as you can see, it evolved far more than being just a, um, a code violation, violations checker. It can run your builds, it can run your, uh, your unit tests, your integration tests, uh, you can even run your run and build tasks now. And all of that with a simple composer required. But the best part, you can actually integrate it with your CI tools. Um, run PHP has a command that you can run and trigger all the tasks that you have specified, and you can add that to your continuous integration script so that this this free guy will be checking your your builds as well. Fun fact: Run PHP is actually using itself to validate all incoming pull requests. So. And let's try to take this to the next level. What if you want something really specific, something that is not out there yet, but it's something really specific to your project and nobody else would ever use? Well, Grum's got you covered. You can implement this interface, which basically enforces you to set a name for your task, um, set the, handle the configuration, set the options that you have for your configuration, uh, specify the context, and the context is something that you say, I want this to run whenever there's a git commit message or whenever the run command is run. Um, and then in the run method, you define your custom logic. And now you have your custom task, which you add to your run config file, and it's now running whenever you do a new commit or whenever your um, CI it triggers a job. But wait, <laughs> there's more. As I said, Room PHP uses a lot of uses a lot of um, uh, symphony components. One of which is the events dispatcher. And this allows you to hook up to one of, to some of the uh, drunk events. And they're in three main groups. The first one is the task events, and these events are triggered for every specific task that you've defined. So if you want something to run before a task, or whenever a task fails, or whenever it succeeds, you can always hook up to those events. If you want something a little bit broader, you can subscribe to the runner events, they run, um, they're executed uh, before any of the tasks are executed, or if any of the tasks fails, or whenever all tasks succeed. <coughs> and finally, you've got the console events, which are pretty similar. If you want to know when a command is run, or when a CLI command terminates, um, if you want to do something before that, or if you want to handle CLI exceptions, you can do that. And I particularly find this useful whenever you're running it in your continuous integration because it's a cool way to get notifications or to get uh, uh, to log errors whenever something goes wrong. The way to do that is just implement the event subscriber interface. You specify the event you want to subscribe to, then you define the method that you want to run, and after that, you subscribe it as a service to run run config. And that's it. You're not hooked to the event. Can you give some examples of what sort of let's say, share the task you would run? Pardon? Email or telephone, or what would you do with these? Well, things? personally, I think that uh, whenever a uh, job fails, you can send uh, either a Slack notification, well, any kind of message notification, or you can send an email. There's a pull request, <coughs> but it failed. These are the errors. Um, I think these are the most, um, like, useful cases where you can keep hook up to those events. 
And now you're probably thinking it's a cool tool. I hope you're thinking it's a cool tool. Uh, but can I use it? Can I run it on my operating system? And can I use it with my tools? I'm happy to say that Run PHP supports all major versions of PHP and supports somewhat the ones that I you should not be using those. You should be not be using the me version. Um, and it's mainly because some of the tools that you can integrate with Run PHP uh, don't support lower versions of PHP. Runs on every operating system. It's a little bit trickier on Windows, but there's a very cool tutorial, of course. Uh, but there's a very cool tutorial on the GitHub page. Um, it's, they're going to help you set it up in no time. And it's been tested with PHP Storms Git, with uh, Source Tree, Smart Git. Of course, you saw it working in the CLI. I tested it with, um, with Sublime's Git plugin. Um, I think it's going to work with Tower as well, because as we saw, it's uh, depending on Git hooks. So I don't think there will be any problems with other tools that you might use for Git. And finally, let's see some numbers from today. These are the overall downloads since uh, the Composer itself, actually. And you can see that Grump PHP is getting pretty good traction. Um, also, the number of contributors is increasing immensely. It's now 55 people, which compared to the seven when I first did my contribution, like around seven months ago, is a huge raise. Um, from the GitHub post, you can see that the project is evolving. It's not progressing, progressing in huge leaps, rather in small and steady steps, but it is improving constantly. And it needs your help. Um, <coughs> here are my three reasons why I think you should contribute to, um, to Grump PHP. First one, it's always fun to contribute to open source. Um, plus, it would mean less people sitting the next time Michelle Sandberg, I hope I don't have her name properly, um, would have less people sitting. The second one, it's relatively easy. Um, the project itself is very well structured. It's not, it's not really complex. You can get up to speed really easy, and it's going to be a, really easy for you to contribute and to improve the, um, the project. And finally, it's a Benelux project, so you'll be supporting your local community. <laughs> Bonus one, the guys are super cool, super friendly. <laughs> Always. They're always open um, for discussion. They can always help you if you're stuck. And um, yeah, basically, just contribute just so that you get some sort of interaction with those guys. I recommend it. So, who are the, the people behind this? Uh, there are a couple of guys from PHP Row. Uh, it's a Benel uh, Belgium company. I think it's, a, it's an agency. Uh, and. To be fair, I'm not entirely sure why they developed it. Uh, my guess is that <laughs> my guess is that someone got tired of uh, complaining about his colleague's code or her. Uh, and finally, um, I want to use a quote from Peter Parker's wife's uncle: <laughs> "With great power, great comes great responsibility." Grump PHP can help you standardize a lot of aspects of your workflow, including what you have in your commit message. But um, I personally believe that tools like that should be used to prevent mistakes. You should be aware that you want to achieve this, um, and you should use Grump PHP to whenever you accidentally add a second second semicolon. You should not use it to enforce those standards to your team members. Otherwise, they will first off start hating the tool. Uh, personally, they started hating, some of them started hating me. <laughs> and then we had to run through the whole thing, why those things matter, and why we actually use from PHP. And now, I'm open for questions. Yes? Why is those guys uh, happy and funny about not grumpy? 
<laughs> I guess someone got just the question. I'm not sure if everyone heard the question. It was uh, why those guys can't be funny. They they are always angry. Well, that's why I like the initial message. It was me gusta, like the guy with the monocle. Uh, it's a little bit more positive, but I guess they wanna they really like wanna build the brand and they they build the the brand message. And if you yeah, they were grumpy one day before they had the tool. That they built the tool. Yeah. And actually, if you if you take a closer look, you see that the green guy is smiling, so he's not grumpy. He's smiling. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that uh, you can install services in the YAML file. Yeah. And that would notify the developers when the build failed or when it wouldn't complete the. No. It would be yeah. um, Would that run? Like on my local machine and also on the Travis or wherever my CI would be. Well, it really depends on the um, it really depends on the scope. You can check the current scope that the task is running in, and if you check that it uh, if it's running in a commit uh, in the commit scope, so someone is commit committing, you can always ignore that. Uh, but in order to trigger the checks manually, you use the run PHP run. Um, and that's a completely separate context. So based on that context, you can say, okay, I want to send notification, or no, I don't want to send notification. Any other questions? Yeah? Does it keep track of what it already checked? Because sometimes you want to, uh, you have a feature done that you want to be committed in 10 different languages. You don't want it, the whole process, checking the whole project to run 10 times. Um, well, no, it, it doesn't, I'm not sure if everyone heard uh, the question, it, it was if it keeps track of uh, the things that it has already run. Um, no, it doesn't, uh, it's probably good feedback for the, um, for the maintainers, they can put it on the roadmap. Uh, currently, if you specify the task, it will run every time you do a commit, and um, yeah. For instance, I can imagine that you don't want to run your build script in your in, when, every time you you make a commit or your build task. That's why I recommend that you uh, add those kind of tasks to your uh, run context. Yeah. Does it stash uh, uncommitted changes before it runs the test? Well. First off, it uh, checks only the, the files that are staged for commit. Uh, and I think recently they added uh, an improvement, which if you have a file that is staged, but you've made some modifications after the staging, uh, it would stash those changes. Uh, it would run the checks on the staged version, and then it will bring back the stash. Yes? But you know what's wrong, can it also automatically suggest fixes or like fix it for you? Uh, well, for instance, uh, it, it really depends on the tool that you uh, integrate. Run PHP doesn't do that by itself, it uses tools for that. And for instance, the PHP CS fixer, um, whenever it runs the validation, um, it also provides you with the um, with the ability to run the PHP CS fixer on that specific file and try to fix it. Um, but that's that's really not what Run PHP does. Uh, it it really it actually uses um, other tools. And if those tools provide you with the means to fix those can, uh, fix those errors, uh, then you can do it. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know. Is a big difference between a uh, book uh, you have to uh, give books? For example, I can define everything that you mentioned just by manually by myself. Yes, you can. Um, you mean in the git books? Yeah, yeah, just come down and uh, teach. Yeah, you can always you can always do that, but uh, how are you gonna distribute those things to your team? Because the point of Grunt PHP is to unify the standards for the whole team. And having that in um, installed with Composer, Room PHP handles adding those git hook uh, changes so that it's run. And then with the git, git uh, uh, Room PHP YAML file, 
Um, you make sure that the tasks are consistent throughout every everyone in the team. Yes. Uh, based on what you said right now, that means that Grumpy is free to be installed in the project itself. It cannot be run as other nodes. Oh, like PHP units and all the other tools we use. It, there, is an, there is an executable, and actually um, the, the git hook uh, is actually running that, it's actually triggering that executable. So you have the executable, as Raphael said, it's pretty much like, uh, uh, it's like Composer, or it's more like PHP unit, or uh, PHP CS fixer. Yes? Just on the GitHub website, is there a of examples of how to get it to work with Travis? To be fair, no. I, I looked into that. Uh, but, as I said, GrumpyHP is using uh, itself to validate its request. So you can just look at their Travis uh, configuration file, which is in the repository, and you can see how they run it uh, themselves. I think that's the best example you can get. And then create a pull request with the human thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. Any other questions? Yes? When you run a uh, compiler install and someone modifies <coughs> their, uh, their uh, commits the, the, the hook, the hook does it check and reinsert the line? Um, I think, well, to be fair, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, as far as I know, it checks if uh, if your um, hook files are already edited, and it only adds the lines that it needs. And whenever you do a composer remove, it removes only those lines. So if you have some custom stuff in your um, sorry in your hook files, uh, they will stay after you install it, and like if you remove it. Yes? Uh, are there different uh, levels of uh, errors, like error warning notice to be able to actually commit something which is actually kind of okay? No, yeah. Make sure you come to me after the talk. <laughs> but uh, no. There are two states currently, uh, good and bad. Uh, however, if you feel confident with what you've done, um, you can always add dash n to your git commit to your git commit command, and you can ignore it. Yeah, I shouldn't probably shouldn't have said that, but there is a way. To do that. <laughs> yeah, everyone can do that, and that's why that's why you install it on your CI, and then no one can overcome it. <laughs> Down to what, what is the definition of a broken window? Yeah, yeah. So, any other questions? Or you can follow me on Twitter if you think that was interesting. I share stuff like that. Um, I would also really appreciate it if you um, give me feedback for the talk. Again, it's my first talk. Um, you probably noticed by the demo. Um, and I would love feedback because uh, I'm sure there are ways I can improve this and actually enjoyed it, so I want to do it again, I want to do it better. And make sure you follow GrumpyHP as well and follow this GitHub link and contribute. Thank you.